this underway. Rory on the T side, G2 on the CT side, and already attempted jump down the middle. Could have been a little bit scary, but um, he's going to fall back. He doesn't want to push the envelope any further than that. Otherwise, there's a pretty pedestrian setup coming out right now for the G2 side. Indeed. I was hoping that we would see a similar setup to what we saw from Nip, where both teams just decide to fight it out in mid and you know let the round fall where it may. Not going to be the case. Three men pushing up in the A apartments here. Refresh leading the charge. Kadeen has got a smoke and a flasher. If they wanted to go for the pop out of A, you can smoke off library, you can send the flash down towards pit, and then try and set it up from there. But it's hard to tell from what they have exactly where they're going to land. They've cleared out top mid yet, so there's the smoke for the library. There's the flashbang for the pit. So I'm setting it up nicely. Amanek, though, here to receive them on the other side of the smoke, and he almost had the double. Did tag up Shush down to 20 health. Now the problem is it's going to be a beast split in the pistol round which is wait they slow it down they realize we've got 45 seconds we can maybe see if they're gonna make a mistake which is a cool idea you can see up Kade in here waiting for said mistake that smoke going down to block them off in CT is so vicious though it's now heroic are stuck in a box they've got nowhere to go they have to commit through these choke points and now that favors G2 it's true the slowdown is um, it's amazing if G2 make a mistake and come running but if they don't you're right heroic are just in trouble Nico all the way at the back line here for the USB in hand. Missing a bit of accuracy here, and he's going to get a chance to reload, so plenty of time for that. Hexa battling on his own. Now it's down to Nico, 13 seconds on the clock, alone in the bomb site. Although backup is here, Hunter's shown up. Perfect timing. Oh, this is such a good defense. Hunter with a strong double kill. And G2, they win the opening round on Inferno. Kovac and Kovac, attorneys at law showing up, dropping the pain on Heroic. Nico played that impeccably. Even though he was struggling to find the kills, he stayed alive. That's the whole point. If he stays alive behind your boxes back there, Heroic have to come and root him out. They have to waste time going after him. And with 15 seconds left on the clock, you don't have time for that. Eight seconds left oh. by the time that kill was coming through. Both those kills for Hunter were badass, weren't they? He just tapped them once with the with the dualies, no less. He's such a monster. We've got MP9s. We're ready. We are. This is it. And no shenanigans coming in from Heroic either. So no bomb plant, no force buy. They go for the hard eco so they can afford the rifles and the nades in the next round. So G2, maybe sensing this. They've got the MP9s. And they're just looking to farm up some money right now. And they're playing aggressively in Banana as well. I like to see this. Had anybody been hiding there for Heroic, it would have been a sad time. And instead, they're going to get forced up the top. Perfect. Flab. Pop flash. Hunter, though, not able to control the spray. Four versus four here. Hadian, a chance against Jax. I mean, if they can isolate Jax in this position, he could be in a bit of trouble. He's got that MP9, so it can't be KD, and I think that, that initiates the fight. It's going to have to be someone from middle to help out. And that's tricky. If only they had a flashbang or something, it would really make it a little bit more easy. But actually, Kadian finds the timing. Oh, it's the Glock at range, though. Well, you could tell how much he wanted it. It was a Deagle instead. It would have made a big difference. He's trying to get onto the site. That's a cool idea. But Amanek will show up and cancel all of that out. And G2 will find a second round. No bomb plants either. So Kadian is going to be hard pressed to get a to get an AWP. Tessas could drop him one, but then that would be glass cannon. So I think that we're going to get AKs across the board here for Heroic and just a lot of run and gun. Unless, I mean, you don't, you don't want to do Tessa's dirty that way. He would do it. He's a team player, but <laughs> yeah, he would. that would suck. 2-0 now, 4-G2 on this CT side and holding on to the MP9s as well. Just a moment there where it, it could have got bad. They did find a way, so imagine if you get this one plant here and have a long in this third round. Three MP9s. And on a map like Inferno, I don't even really consider that much of a downgrade. You're pretty much going to be fighting, fighting point line range every step of the way, so there's no reason to be worried. Yeah, choke Those. points uh, choke points abound on this map, right? You can't exactly. get close quarters. Heroic are going to do the best they can to clear those angles out with these Molotovs so they don't have any of those unwanted surprises kind of lurking around. But with four players here on this A-bomb site, Heroic, had they committed, this would have been a bloodbath. taking over Banana, though, with a minute on the clock. And so they're gonna, they're still leaving the options open here, as Heroic exactly. Rotate around, try and get a little bit of control on this side of the map. They're leaving their options. They don't need to commit here just yet. No, they still have plenty of time. Not that many nades, though, which is kind of an issue. 
almost at top mid, but they need to check it. They need to clear it. Now, a random shot for the smoke from Stown over at the B-bomb site. And that is a huge opening round here with the rifles. They've just won the round by essentially shooting half the team for smoke. That's ridiculous. How is that even a thing? <laughs> and then... Hamanek and Hunter just decided enough is enough. We're actually going to rotate back over. They were hoping for the double bluff, I think, to make it sound like they were rotating hard to B and then to rub back over to more, towards mid, but Heroic are not falling for that. They get that bomb planted, and Heroic are going to get on the board nice and early here in this first half. Feels Almost feels like nuke all over again. Yeah, a bit of a start, but swift return. Yeah. Heroic 2-1 to one is, uh, I mean, it's, not, it's too early to say but it's at least something to be able to take some of it away. And that's the gambler's thing to do when you have that many MP9. Sometimes the AK will be a lot more hard hitting. Refresh with a pretty good cleanup here. And let's see, G2, oh, if they force this round, it's gonna be really awkward, isn't it? It is, I almost want to see them just go for half buys. I mean, three players survive for Heroic as well, so it's not like their, their economy's going to tap. I would like to see just like Eagles and Let It Ride. And then you can get the AWPs if you want to make that a core strategy here going forward. You'll have the money for those. And yeah, G2 going for a very hard Eagle almost. Just a few Deagles. Considering the money they have, just a couple of Deagles and a P250. I mean, it is still Deco, of course. You give that guy a Deagle, he might as well have an op. But, uh... Oh, well, that just made it a lot more difficult. <laughs> Max damage. Email. I mean, he is good, but... That's asking a lot. USP did just sneak past, maybe leaving it for the pistols behind. And then go for the charge down. It's a cool idea. And I kind of even understand why he didn't try and take the shot with the USP, because very likely they just spin and kill him. So if he had a deagle, it would have been totally different. Yeah, and I think maybe some of the people behind him had some upgraded pistols. He was like, you know, you take care of him. I'll try and look for the fight. And it, the timing didn't work out. So fair play. Nico might have a chance to flex that deagle in spite of everything. Let's we'll see it. <laughs> Let's see it. He's in the right position for it. And, yeah, they know where he is. He has to get that instant kill for that to work out. So a second round on the board now for Heroic. It can never be easy. That's the thing. Neither of these teams, I think, are capable of blowing out the other one. I mean, we saw a little bit of that in the second half of Mirage, where G2 were really confident, and Heroic had a, had a struggle fest to try and get involved. Yeah. But uh, it has to be tit for tat and back and forth between these two teams. <laughs> That's a dedication. That's dedication solid. to the meme. That's solid. Many of those chickens are going to die here on this map, dude, so. Sucks for you. As he's running up second mid, really quickly going to jump all the way into apps. He's on a mission to try and get into those air apartments as fast as he possibly can. Hasn't found any resistance out there either. Yeah, see him. He's checked everything. Great speed. over the top and here's that the delayed retake of banana so just making sure that heroic are going to be having to fully commit to this if they want to get in on this side of the map exactly maximum noise maximum pressure and now heroic are just trying to freak out and wonder what is going on over here see the hesitation they don't know what's on the other side all those footsteps smoking up at the archway Refresh is just trying to make some noise and trying to see if he can draw or keep people on this side while Nexa is on his own in the B-bomb side. Man, Nexa! He only just now throws that smoke! Yeah. <laughs> Every second matters on Inferno. The longer you can delay that smoke, the better. And that's going to buy time for Nico to rotate back, which is incredible news. Amanek is making a run for it. They've made a call right now, G2. They realize this is going to be a B hit, and they're not wrong about it either. 29 seconds, trying to get the boost in in time. It's almost there. Nico actually waiting maybe for the bomb to be attempted. He's sneaking on over, but they see it coming. What a beat from Shush and Nekra. Back at the bomb site. Big double kill for him so far. 15 seconds. He almost could have had it. If he gets that triple, maybe he can fall back and try and win the round. But instead, Jack and Jackson Hunter are just gonna, gonna have to stay back at the A bomb site instead. Oh, Nico and Amanek trying to get clever there. That was such a close call. Trying to delay that boost, but Heroic, they had so much room to maneuver with. There were no flashes or anything to throw them off, and so they can just sit there and watch that CT angle and wait for it. Nexa did the best that he could there. Two kills and really delaying that push. 
But G2 now going to be on the back foot at the beginning of this half on Inferno. And that's the last thing you want on CT side. You really need all of your grenades on the CT side of Inferno to really get that defense rolling. You see just how much utility they're throwing into Banana each round. And so G2 now are really going to have to fight from behind. Boom. There are the flames. Get those gonna walk out of out. here with a tan after that. <laughs> Three to two. Sixth round is coming up. And I mean, this is a brilliant beginning for Heroic. You lose the pistol and you just roll right back into it. Jax so far has got zero kills. The rest of them are kind of up there. Starting to get in the right direction. But we know there's such a strong correlation between winning CT rounds on Inferno and having the weapons and especially the grenades. So the fact that it turned around against G2 so early on, it's a big problem. We've got two M4s in this round and a Deagle on the CT side. Try and see if they can build something on it. Interesting boost they've got going on over at B right now. Oh, catching Hunter already. Hunter out of the picture, gets caught in Boiler. And now this opens up the business here for Heroic. The rotation's already gone through. Jack's thinking he needs to lose that B-bomb site. Damanek peak for info in mid. Loses his head, and that's going to be the round. You can save one rifle at least here, although Jax is going to be the closest one to the action. If he can catch Tessus out, this be big. Not going to react in time. Just hoping to make it a little bit more expensive there for Heroic. They're just getting these opening kills, and that's the thing. I mean, it's really something to keep an eye on, guys. When whichever of the two teams gets the opening kill in the round, the odds heavily favor those two teams. These two teams rarely give up the advantage once they've got it. And so if Heroic keep finding these opening kills, it's going to be grim for G2. They're not making any of these mistakes, which, I mean, thank God at this point in the tournament, you don't want to see a team, you know, that get overconfident and try to say, oh, we've got one opening kill, it's fine, we're just going to rush it. They keep looking around for them. They're playing it as carefully as they can. And for good reason. We've already seen in this best of three what happens if G2 start to feel like they can get back into it, just that they don't need a lot, and they're going to be fired up once again. So it's good to see. Pretty, pretty common around this one. G2 just going to be trying to save that Deagle on the other side. And here we go. Now up to four. At some point, G2 will have to put an end to this little run that they've got going. They're building a lot of money on the T side as well. They're actually filthy rich right now in Heroic. Man. Bombs goes off and there you go. Cheering section starting to get pumped up here a little bit on that Danish side. Heroic extending that lead to 4-2. And now, after that last round, that's why G2 were willing to go ahead and get a little bit more frisky with the rifles. Jax, you know, kind of hunting, because that was rounds, those, those were rounds of eco, and now we're going to get the full buy coming in here on G2 side. But again, somewhat light on the grenades. No kits to play with. This is it here from G2, and Heroic really trying to turn up the pace. Boost over the top. Does it catch him out? I mean, he was flashed. If they did a little bit further, it might have worked, but instead it's Amanek to take down Shush. And it was close, they almost had that peak on it. I don't think he could have seen anything. And a shot for the wall on Katie, and just letting him know they're not welcome on this side of the map. Four on five now as they try to return to top mid, see if they can have an impact here. But I think G2 smartly saying, yeah, you can have that now. Now that we have the man lead, you three. That is such a nicely done, nice timing on that incendiary as well. Heroic, we're trying to hit a timing to get onto this A-side quick, and it's still possible. Flash around the corner, and now they have to go. This is all on the defense to hold. Yep, they're going to speed it up, but the Molotov will slow them down. That's a pretty good defense already, and now it's buying time. The rotation down through Banana and up through middle. Grenade going to land right on top of them. will soften them up a bit more. Yax on the other side still looking for his first kill, but he turns around expecting a flashbang. Pass. will take him down, and Hunter will fall next. That is a disaster. Still a three on three with 40 seconds now, but at least they're on the site. Nexa gets blown up in library. Straight headshot from Stown to take him down. And Nico, he's been on that long flank, but it might have been too late. Because they fell so quickly in this A bomb site, there might not be enough time for the flank to actually do its job. Nico trying to get in, being covered by that AWP, but he's walking into a giant crossfire. Sees the shot though, Tessis is gone. Nice start, they need a lot more, and Stown inside of it will drop him into return. Triple kill for Stown right now, and Amanek, how do you do this with an AWP? He gets the one kill, he can't miss a single shot, and Kadian will take him down. It's another one for Heroic. They survive losing that early banana fight. 
Katie's reaction says it all. That is a monster clutch to win against G2 right now. And Amanek is going to be feeling it. But again, when you're that close trying to clutch with the AWP, they can hear the scope sound. As soon as he scopes up, there's no reason for Heroic to start peeking. They just hold their angles and wait for him to try to initiate it. Oh yeah, there you go. Caden's popping off as always. Always wearing his heart on his sleeve, so, showing so much emotion. So five to two now. And keep in mind that that was a round that G2 had the advantage in. And the long characteristic loss. Yeah, it, it was. Because they, I mean, they more or less did everything right. They fell back, they bought time with the Molotovs. It was all looking really good. Now, maybe a chance with that C set 75 at the back of the bomb side. It is a strong double kill as it takes down Tess as well. The Molotov needs something here to get the rifle back. Damanek shows up, absolutely stunning play, shutting down Shush and Kadian. They've turned it around with just pistols and nothing else. Refresh, one versus three. He's got a minute left, but how do you bring this round back? Absolutely outrageous. Refresh here. What can he do? Sneak it outside of the B bomb site. He's got a full minute. He would love it if someone would come peek. Anything right now to give it back to him, but G2, they're too smart right now. They're staying put, and they're gonna let him come to them instead. Behind the pillar, it's a hard position to clear. You can see Refresh, he knows that someone could be back there. Oh, they're all gonna jump him at the same time. Smoke is up, counter three. He's gonna pick up the bomb. Maybe he can make a run for it, but no, Emenek will stop him. What a stunning round from G2. You gotta get a few of those in as well, Anders, in both of these teams right now. It's that mental back and forth, that tug of war. Heroic were the one to catch a fast one on G2, and now G2 are the ones to catch Heroic getting complacent. This is what it's all about now on this final map. It's who is going to have the mental fortitude to stay focused round in, round out, and not make any mistakes the way Heroic just made against G2. Not checking Hunter, not hard clearing that position with the CZ-75, just threw everything out of whack for Heroic. Back to back though, and Heroic just with monstrous cash. They have so much money in the bank, so Heroic are just fine here. Five rounds on the board on the T side. Full buy and another full buy in the bank. So G2 have a long way ahead of them here to start taking the lead in this half. They go for a bit of a gamble, which is understandable. When you have limited nades and everything else, they put Nico over at, at Banana on his own. He's actually going to get a bit of backup now with Damanek coming in. But they had that 4 1 set up for, uh, for a minute. And if you were going to leave someone alone, why not let it, let it be Nico? He's, he's proven that he could probably carry that. Now instead, they do a bit of a swap out getting Amanek into position. He has another smoke and an AWP. So looking to play this corner, get a, get a kill and just try and smoke it off and run. Name of the game essentially. With a minute on the clock though, Heroic. We're gonna get those initial smokes over. They're still so light on grenades. Two flash grenades, refresh fully re-upped though. He's going to set it up for the rest of his team as Shusha is going to set. We're gonna get a boost over the top from Kadian, and this is the angle change. Hamanek is gonna be quick enough. No, misses the shot, but that gives it away. They know that at least two players are there, and Heroic decided it's now time to go. Get onto this B bomb site. And Nico showing up to try and save his teammate. Hamanek has a nice shot. Shush. Oh my God! Cracking open the bomb site, and now it's a four-on-three. I can't believe they make it into this round at all. Fresh trying to stay out of the line of that flashbang. Shooting through the smoke. It's next to the takedown. Refresh though. Still a two-on-three. Hunter got killed, trying to edge his way onto the bomb side, but this is a strong position. If they had a Molotov, they could they could basically get a double kill in the corner, but they don't, and they start to back on out. They're going to give Heroic this round six to three. That's what a, shocking. What a hard game. What a hard game for G2. Jax just can't catch a break either. It's either nightmare retakes and some man disadvantages, or you're just flashed into oblivion getting rushed on the A bomb site. He's on a secret agent right now, just trying to save, but he has yet to get a kill on the board here for G2. Sixth round, picked up for Heroic, some grins on that side of the stage. It's picking up. Everybody on Heroic is popping off right now. Kadian is a little quiet, but I mean, Shush just keeps coming up with monstrous kills that just open up bomb sites for him. A little bit of pressure now on the G2 side. Ah, but they're unfazed. They're unfazed. <laughs> yeah, the, the fans are still with him, no doubt. It's still pretty early on. I, I wouldn't want to jump to any conclusions, but this feels like the same start that we've had. <laughs> All right. He's got the prediction. Get a screenshot, see if it works out. Now, 
this is how every other map has started. It's been heroic, off to a good start. They look like they're about to choke out G2, and then G2 starts to make their way back. We haven't reached that point yet, but that's been the formula so far for this best of three, so they need to rediscover whatever it is that can bring them back in the game here, G2. Tenth round coming your way. He's essentially breaking up a crossfire between Nico and Amanek on that AWP. That's really hard to do with a jump up from yellow like that. Medical PC. Right. Simple setup here. Nico ready to flash in. Nexa. In case anything is happening. Quick peek there. Top banana. Didn't see anyone though. Oh, the change of pace though. I could have swore Stalin got that fade away headshot. That would have been insane. Take late here from G2 trying to apply maximum pressure to Banana to force Heroic back. And Heroic currently waiting to see if anybody was going to go for the play for info here in mid. So both of these teams feeling it out on the map. But Heroic definitely more connected on this side. Amanek, will he hit this shot? He's got a chance. Jax going to be there back up. And Amanek gets the job done. Brilliant work. Four players survive for Heroic. And now the push begins straight onto the A side. They're going to try and wrap it, catching Hunter out of the open. They know, they know so much, they know where three out of five players are. They know that was a double setup. They just saw the guy at library, and now they're gonna make a run for it. They can guess, ex or they can know exactly how many people are in B. So this is an isolated, well, one versus four now. Next is gonna smoke it off, but they shouldn't be respecting this too much. They're gonna wrap around, and now the rest of them are coming through Banana. They're a little bit tagged up, but also out of nades on that heroic side. And now Nico. He's ready for it, waiting for Nexa. There's the initial peek, he catches him mid-air. Brilliant double kill for Nico. The timing is so good, and Hunter is there to take down Stown. It's all on Kadian, one versus three. So they found a way to break through here, and Hunter will take down Kadian as the final kill. G2 back on the board after losing, well, almost six in a row. There's a little bit of, a, of an odd round there, but they've started to find the rhythm again. Yeah, the pressure starting to mount here. It could fall on heroic shoulders more so than G2's, although G2 still hunting for kills on their side, but given a chance, I mean, Amanek right now is playing his heart out. Nine kills on the board for him, 10 for Hunter. But Amanek, you know, suffering a bit of criticism, obviously having to play the change up all these roles. What he brings to the table, though, has been tremendous. And Kadian just full flash, caught in the open. He is gone. Nexa with a double. They almost burned out to the Molotov. That was dangerous. Hunter is only barely alive, but a five on three. That is the nature of that banana fight. That'll happen sometimes. All right, nice job. Sick. You know, nades. Catching a few nades, why not? Works. With a minute 15 though, heroic. This is so hard to fight back from. Still a good couple of nades left on G2 as well. So refresh, hoping that somebody's gonna step in. Yeah, there's the flash over the top, completely unfazed. J2 hold the line, Jax is on the board. Couple of kills for him, holding that A bomb site. Given the chance, he steps up. That's a good job, and they had one flashbang. It actually looks so funny, because refresh pulls out the knife to try and make a run for it, but it is the right move. You just have to clear the apartments to get out. And yeah, this is the devastation that we call the banana by G2. Job on Jax as well, getting himself a little bit warmed up in the game. It's now five to six. G2, they're starting to make their way back. It is following the same formula that we saw earlier. Yep. It just takes a while, but once G2 wake up, well, they just need to make life hard on themselves first, right? Oh. It can't be easy. It can't be one-sided. It has to be a battle. It has to be a struggle. And that's just good entertainment. We all get to benefit. More rounds for us, Anders. Oh, nice flash over the top though. Can they line up? Yep, Nico mowing them down. Triple making a quad. Going for the ace. Gets shut down. Only going to be the one left though. And Kadian is not going to get it done. Nexa holds the line. Feel good round for Nico though. He's been needing it. Got a little quiet there from him, but he's back on the scoreboard on the top. A devastating flash battle on Nexa otherwise. So if Nico doesn't show up for that quad kill, I mean, maybe they actually just take down Nexa and could build something behind it. So that was really well done. Six to six, tied up. We're going into the 13th round. Let's see. Now, sit back right now on the G2 side. Something that they haven't been, haven't really had the luxury of having that so far yet. Right now, it's looking good. Hunter, sitting for anything going on in the middle. Having a close 
fine with the AWD, but if they burst through here, Hunter that all might not be that good as a backup tool. Adian goes down though, Hunter, nice shot from that one. And there's the kill, that's all you wanted it for. Another double opening this time for G2, and holding the bottom of Banana is next to it, they just come right through. Oh, brilliant double kill, and refresh on his own. And G2, you said you've got to, you've got to put him to bed early. You have to get him that, yeah, exactly. And I think right now, the thing is that we're seeing Heroic trying to force the issue. Instead of it happening naturally the way it was before, now they're trying to they're trying to get in there early. They're trying to take the fight to G2, and G2 are prepared for that, although Refresh hitting some freaky shots. There's a beautiful headshot. Hunts down a third as well. Turns this into a 1v2, but he doesn't expect Nico at the bottom of mid. Only so much he can do in that situation. Too many angles to worry about. But that would have been insane. Still, puts a dent in the eco here for G2, so that's important. Every kill counts going into the remaining two rounds of this half. Oh, yeah. This is so tense. It really, you have just having the same repeat experience of watching Heroic look like they are dominant and then seeing DG2 just slowly bring it back round for round, waking up, powering up the whole thing here. 14th round is coming up. If they can finish this 9-6, that is going to be hard for Heroic to deal with. Oh, yeah. That'll be a nightmare, the disaster, considering how far ahead Heroic were. But that's really the trend these days, Anders, right? Where teams just pick up, they pick up four or five rounds in a row, and then it starts to shift back the other way. And now we get to see G2, where they're on the CT side, they're fully equipped. They can even drop extra nades in CT spawn for the rotators. They have everything they need here to set up that defense. And this is where they can go back to the defense that they practiced time and time again. They need this, they need this badly. I don't know if they want to go for something like a half by here, just, you know, get some, get some tech nines and some pistols out. Kading is feeling the pressure though, only three kills for him right now. Oh, you're right. This was one of the comments that was raised by our analysts going into this match where they weren't quite sure where was Kading going to be able to step up and having that impact. And right now, he's leaving us a little wanting. Tech nines, that's a little bit disappointing. I feel like this is the perfect map for it. Yeah, trying to throw it back down. to the, uh, the good old days of Olaf. Exactly. That's what I was hoping for. Hunter and Jax are playing a double position in the apartments, and otherwise, three people over at B. Looks like there's a huge gap in the middle, but if you're on the T side, it's really hard to guess that this, this is what is going on. They will flash their way through. I think Nexture is going to be back just in time in the library to at least spot them coming through. So, oh no, yep, he's going to realize he is ready and waiting. If he had been there a little bit earlier, he might have even just wide peeked and got taken down. A lot of people there ready and waiting. Hunter, he's in a kill, but stepping around a bit too much. Nico and Jax follow it up and it's down the last to go down. It's a good recovery. Jackson starting to wake up a bit. Nice double. Eight to six. Going into the last round now. Uh, now I wonder if we really see the kind of default approach here from uh, Heroic. The main thing is that in these past few rounds, it really has been G2 getting the opening kills, making all the difference. It's not like they're winning them decisively. You don't have some player, one player that's just taking over completely in that sense, but they are getting it as a team. And so right now, Heroic, I wonder if they kind of play default, hang back, and wait for G2 to overstep. Silent with the Molly at the top banana. This is standard stuff. Yeah, everybody kind of hanging around here. Second mid, taking their time with it, waiting to see if G2 were going to go for the aggressive mid push. That's not the case. Every single round that G2 has won so far in this first half have been killed. No bomb plants. They had bomb plants in the rounds that Heroic won, obviously, but when they win, they just murder all of them before anyone even gets close to a bomb site. That's is big. Crazy. That's a big detail. Oh, and then we're going back to the well. This worked last time. Trying to see if it's going to work again. Amanek has been consistent with that AWP. Yeah. Given the chance, he's been hitting shots. And Jax has to trust in him quite a bit, right? They will cancel it. Right as refresh peaks. That's some scary timing. Oh, but it works out. They almost caught it there. Refresh almost had the timing against Jax when Amanek had already left. We haven't really seen too much of this, though. Hiding in the corner. Nastiness. Seconds though, Anders, this is getting close. Now Heroic are gonna decide. They need to decide if this is A or B. The bomb right now, rotating. Yeah, so lonesome, even more now. Here we go. 
He's on his own, and he realizes his refresh is probably, I mean, he knows the refresh is up there because he shot him in the back already, so. Kadian, oh, that's a Molotov in hand. Don't go that way. Tesses is down. Jax with the opening of the return. Taking down refresh, that is huge. And Nano sealed the bomb site at least here, but they've already started to rotate over. Nico and Nexa. Double set up in the B bomb side. This should be a powerful defense, and it will be. Next are on the follow up. This is such a lockdown. About to be six in a row for G2. Taking down heroic on Peck here. You ready? Well, let's get this show on the road. Second half here. Final battleground. G2 versus heroic. And we need to decide on a winner. Sure, should refresh up playing the A bomb side. Kadian's in spawn. Like he's waiting around. Oh no! He knocks him out. And that was Nico popped in the middle. What a grotesque beginning. Talk about a high value target as well in the pistol round. Taking Nico out of the picture already for heroic is tremendous. Man advantage now going into this hold. And it's looking like G2 just gonna get ready to go crashing through. Flash on Nexa, he'll be the one setting this up. Oh, this is very tricky. That this double position in pit can actually be so screwed. Molotov will force them out, and shockingly, no one is there to yeah. catch them. They needed to go while they were running. Refresh down in the pit. It's a good kill, and Shush, he made it out as well. He's getting tagged and dinked and trying to reload, but they're coming for him. It's Hunter with the kill, and next are on the follow up, and just like that, it's a 2 on 2. The bomb is in pit, and Nexus is going to be backing out to pick that one up. Oh, what a ridiculous pistol round. It looked like that should have been lost already for G2, but they fought their way back in. Oh, this is it, though. Star not going to be able to shut him down. That's valuable info. Hunters pick that up. There's Tessus, though. They know it's all on. On Hunter, 1v2 to come up for the goods for G2. He's going to get the kill on Stavins, drops him out of it. Looking for the headshot, and he gets it. Hunter wins the pistol round for G2. Had to make that happen. Look at that, all the mind games. It's all happening up here. What a Not going to crack under the pressure. What a shocking clutch that is. He, I mean, he's flashed on the first kill. They know where he is. So there's no surprise. There's nothing else to work with here. No grenades. It's just him and his Glock. And it works. 10 to 6. <laughs> <laughs> it's all up here, man. It's all up here. Yeah. Hunter doesn't crack on the stage. What a savage. 10 rounds on the board now for G2 winning the pistol round. There's the flying start that they were looking for in this uh, second half. And what do you do if you're heroic? Well, you go for the force buy. Deagles scout on Cadian. They have a pretty good setup with three people. Eagle is out, and even the reduced uh, damage to the body. Still a pretty good spam there for Stown. He's going to take a kill. They are getting closer, though. And the closer they get, the more those Mac 10s will feel the damage. You can see how they can just jump, and even through the smoke and everything, it doesn't really matter. So, nice attempt. Good call on the stack, but couldn't get the kills. It's about to be 11 to 6 in favor of G2 as they are just a few steps away now from their grand finals. They're so close, and this is where we're going to get the answers to our questions, whether or not Heroic, the lack of experience on this team, is going to spell their demise here, if the pressure is going to get to them. Kadian's still sitting on three kills. Everybody else at ten, apart from Tessis, he's got nine. So again, that's really that Heroic kind of stereotypical play from them where everybody's very even. But you don't have anybody just taking over the game right now and bailing Heroic out of these tight spots. So heroic, rough start, as hard as it gets here to this second half. They do save a couple of deagles and some Kevlar going into this one, but it's another round of eco. G2 are gonna get just that much closer to the grand finals here in Stockholm. And there's the chant. <laughs> They're getting fired up for good reason. This has been, I mean, it's just a wall of G2 rounds that have been put up right. Six to close out the first half with opening here with another two rounds. Heroic struggling now. Without a doubt, the pressure is building. And this is where, again, we said it earlier, but when you're on the main stage like this, this is as deep as almost any of these players have ever made it into a tournament of this size. You, the pressure is going to be on. You're going to make mistakes. All it takes is one little crack, and you could lose the round. Amanek with a charge in. He's going to find his town. He's just so fast. He's not feeling any pressure. He's loving it. Does that give it away, though? So fast, and he just finds a guy camping CT like that. that has so little information to go off of. But Heroic aren't showing anything either. This is a full-on gamble stack from Heroic, and that might be enough. Amanek going to get caught. He's wondering, where are these targets coming from right now? Jack's taking Kadian, and they just walk into this? No way. 
They do, but they might still win the fight anyway just because of the rifles here. So, yeah, they know. They're going to leave Refresh on his own. He can maybe go and find, find a Galil. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you lose that Galil, fair enough. But it's a Galil after all, it's not an AK. Yeah, and they can come back to find him maybe if they wanted to, but at least secure the round by planting the bomb. It kind of makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, just leave it at this point. I mean, because now, next set, you can always use that MAC-10 in the next round for your entry man, right? You can always go for that. So even throwing away the MAC-10 unnecessarily is kind of a waste of money on the G2 side right now on this T side, because that MAC-10 can still get value. And a Galil is like, yeah, whatever. Not a big he, would, he would have bought an M4 anyways this round. So you're actually keeping him on a Galil instead. That's solid. Apart from Kadian, who's been struggling a bit at four kills, everyone else on Heroic is at 10. Yeah, it's crazy. They're just lined up for that, 10 kills. The balance between these players. And there we go. We get the flames, we get a tan. Oh, and he's not going to make it! Nexa comes over the top and takes him down. Oh, that's heartbreaking. I mean, again, like you said, it is just a good deal, but it's even the small things, right? When they stop working, when you feel like you can't even get to save the rifle, 12 to 6. What is it going to take to stop them right now? Where is the heroic of that we've been seeing all throughout this tournament? They've become very quiet here. Oh, they have. <laughs> the pressure is on. And the heroic fans right now, yeah, you're right. A bit quiet. Heroic need that energy. You know, it can't just be the G2. Yeah, exactly. G2 are organized over there. Okay, at least some of the heroic fans aren't gathering in on this. Isn't it wonderful to have Counter Strike back finally? It's it been is. a long time coming. Lan audience, this is what it's all about for the major as well. It couldn't be more fitting. And we oh. come back to land with this. Down the middle. It's down. He has his way in. He's only gonna get the one kill though. Kadian, he's maybe a bit late to the party. That was the whole plan for him to maybe pick up another kill with the AWP. Shush is thinking about trying to work his way into one of his own. It's a strong position, but Hunter's right. Oh no. He doesn't check. Is it, oh, this is, could go any which way. Hunter, is he going to give it up now? Kadian, does he realize Hunter is falling back? What in God's name is going on? It's just to find the kill on Hunter. Oh man. He didn't see the gun barrel. But, he just missed it. But they've opened up the B bomb site. So even in spite of that huge coincidence over there. They have the B bomb site, they go for the bomb on and Nico. Shocking refresh on that kill. Hadian and Shush, two versus three, and they, they probably can't go for it. They're so fast, Anders. That's the thing. This the, the change of pace coming in here from G2, where Nico's putting himself in a position to catch the retake before it can even happen. Before refresh can get clever and try and push that smoke. You're thinking it's possible because as soon as that bomb gets planted, if it's two players there, it's a 1v1 for refresh and he can make a play. But Nico gets there just ahead of him. Cuts him off at the pass, and this will be a 13th round on the board for G2 on this T side of Inferno. And Heroic now just desperate to hold on to whatever they can going into this next round to give them a fighting chance. I mean, again, that looked like the kind of opening that you could have built something off, right? A couple of good trades, they find Hunter up there, but because they lose the banana fight at the very same time, and Nico comes up with a triple kill, they just take the round like it's nothing. 13 to 6, G2 three rounds away now. And Heroic, they have got no answers. They have got nothing that can stop this. The hype is real right now. And this is it. Decent buy, actually, all things considered for Heroic. Able to get a good gamble going. G2, standard mollies so far. Second bit presence. Not going to let Heroic get frisky up in the apartments just yet. Now Amina can take one with this MAC-10. He's going to be so quick. This is a monster HE, though. Oh. So much damage. Oh, no. That is devastating. They were just all stuck in that small, confined space. Amina tries to make the jump down, but they are very soft already. Shush will get the one kill, and this looks like it's uh, meant to be round for Heroic. There should be no way to give this one back. Nexa will find a kill in the middle on Stout. He was lurking around there. But they know where he is. They have him almost entirely boxed in, and the bomb is in the pit, so we have a couple of uh, unlikely round wins, but this one would probably take the cake. Oh, yeah. Still, a 1v2 here. Winnable. 
Yeah, he spots, gets some information, knows where one of them is coming from now. The Molotov is going to buy some time, and this is, yeah, prompting the rotation now from Kadian. And so Nexus only got a couple, a couple of seconds before the door closes on him. <laughs> As he tries to get around this corner, odds are Kadian is going to hit this shot. Jiggle peek. Oh, he catches Kadian now! No way. 1v2. It's entirely possible now for Nexa. 30 seconds left with that M4A1. They peek together. Very nicely done there. Refresh and Tess Timed it up. 3, 2, 1, peak. And Nexus caught out. You can feel the pressure is unquestionably getting to, to Kadian just a bit here. That's a shot that you need to hit. It's 13 to 7, and it is the first time in in what? In 10 rounds that Heroic have picked up a, a single round for themselves here. Four kills on the board for Kadian right now, yeah. And he's actually having a bit of a discussion with an admin, wondering if he's got an audio issue or something. That could be. Admin is currently going in back and forth between the players. And uh, during tech timeouts, the difference is that the players cannot speak with one another. So you have tactical timeouts where the coaches and the players can communicate for 30 seconds, 30 additional seconds to the buy period. But in technical timeouts, you can't use those as additional timeouts. So those are just, everybody freezes, and only the people who have an issue are able to communicate with the admins. Unfortunate time for a bit of a break. Ah, That's not yeah. what you want to see. Especially because it means that G2 just gets to sit there and stew. It's not even necessarily the math that's the problem here. It's, it's just the atmosphere on that heroic team. All of the air has gone out of the balloon for them, and they need to find a way to get this back. And they don't have a lot of time to do it either. Tension is rising. <laughs> but that is the f pr first proposal I think I've seen. Probably not right now, but you never know. Pretty sure there's someone in the crowd uh, sitting not far away from you who's going to have something to say about that. Competitive tournament, isn't it? <laughs> 21st round. Interesting, Man. though. In terms of opening kills right now, Nico's the highest rated in the tournament. But in this map, he's not coming up with those opening kills. So we'll see if Nico can wake up here in these critical rounds for G2. pick up where they left off. They won 10 rounds in a row. And now, finally, Roik popped up and had something to say. Not the most convincing round that we've seen at all. But something to build on, without a doubt. Got that AWP on Kadian. He's gone missing in this game, and it's hard to pull yourself back out of a slump in the middle of a semi-final, but good opening on Nico will certainly be a step in the right direction. They need much more of that. If Kadian can wake up very, very late in the hour here, what a difference it would make. Indeed, the pop-offs would be insane. But the Molotov in the back pit, just to try and keep Heroic on their toes here on this A defense as G2 wrap back around to the other side of the map. And they are going to challenge Kadian once again. They have the utility to throw over the top here to clear this angle, and he is going to try and play a close, legendary angle here. Top of Banana, there's the first kill from Kadian, gets the second as well. Not going to get the third, though. So close, but he's done his job this round. That's exactly the kind of Kadian they need. Brilliant stuff, very aggressive. Oh, no! Through the smoke, though. Hunter, he could see nothing, and he still got the kill on Stown. Now, the bomb is going to be planted swiftly. Molotov, I would say that's a pretty early use of it. If you're going to win this round, hold on to those nades. They're going to smoke off CT spawn again. That might push Heroic all the way onto construction. Hunter started the walk out here. That's the lineup you want. You want to be able to spray through them as they try and get that defuse. We've seen it many times before. I think Hunter has got the right idea. He's also low on health, and Nexa is inside of the bomb site. Bit of a crossfire. There's the spray for Nexa, but he can't get more. Hunter on his own, and he's going to be found by a refresh. Nice kill. Nice return here, and Heroic. They're going to have the kit, and they're going to have the round as well to top it off. Oh, man. They are slow to get back into this game, but a couple of steps here in the right direction. It's 8 to 13. Such a close call, but well done on the side of Kadian. Triple kill, that's what your offer can come up with on Inferno. That's what's possible, especially from that position in particular. If you can turn it into a series of duels as they come around the corner, you can gun them down one at a time. Ends up getting overwhelmed, but still, he did his job in this round. What wonderful work from him. 
And now eight rounds on the board for Heroic. Still plenty of money for G2, though. They are able to get that buy. Early nades towards Banana, putting some pressure. KD going to get forced back. And in the meantime, Hunter very quickly through. Does he have the chance? Does he have the chance? He doesn't check behind him. He doesn't check. Boiler shoots with the double. Oh, no. He's going to come back for more. He nearly had the triple there. Amanek, lucky to be alive. There's a four and three hit. It's down. Just playing it as safely as you can. Shoulder peeking, jiggle peeking at Nico. Is he thinking about it? He wants it again. He's got the right idea. But all he does is bait out the smoke, and that will slow them down. These are the kinds of unforced errors, though, that are really going to make or break this, uh, this half. Yeah. You usually check that. Here, you're checking that angle every time. But this, you cut that corner just this once, and that's where Shush happens to be standing. Shush wasn't even looking at you. Shush was looking into the apartments. It would have been a free kill. And that'll haunt Hunter when they check the demo later. But with three players alive here at G2, it's looking like they're just going to commit. The hard flank is coming in from Heroic. They have to get onto the bomb site now. Refresh, nice flank. Oh, that will just cancel it out. The timing could not have been better. That's the kind of proactive move that we haven't seen really out of Heroic too much at all in the second half. But that's what it, that's what happens sometimes when you win a couple of rounds, a little bit goes your way. You start to feel like, okay, but maybe we could keep doing this. Three in a row here, 13 to nine. The money started to get depleted here for G2. With no bomb plant either in that round, it's a problem. Interesting. We have another pause coming in here, trying to determine whether it's a tactical or a technical. And that triple in the round, how much more can we get out of him? We're about to find out as they are finally forced to go for pistols here G2 after that last round. It's going to be the hard buy, big buy coming up in the next one. So this is all just on G2, hoping that they're going to be able to find someone to hit a headshot on. Jackson Nico. Applying a little bit of pressure on that side of the map, and this is all great for G2. If they can get Heroic to throw more grenades before Heroic figure out what they're up against, this is all money being spent by Heroic that G2 are just going to be so happy about. Name of the game in Eco Rounds is also to try and get your opponents to throw as many grenades as possible, because that's all money that they're not getting back and that they're going to have to spend in the following round. That boost, once again, we've been seeing teams go for this a lot over half wall. All right, don't give up this round, Heroic. It's just pistols, but it's also Nico on the Eagle. This is a big, a big upset. Oh, it's down. Nice, nice hold. Nico spinning around for the straight headshot. And that's at least something that they can build on. Amanek, can he catch Shush? He's walking with his back out in middle. Oh, this is scary. Amanek will find the kill. And now Nico's going to make the escape. He's out of the bomb site. Make it a run for it. They can't catch him. He is, oh, wait. They don't realize, Nico, he is a genius, he gets the spring, oh! They jump around the corner, what a save! Unbelievable! And Amanek is now on his own, that was the round, that might have been the game, that might have been the semi-final. Amanek is going to be found and heroic, they found a way through anyway, unbelievable. Yeah, you can see that one stings, you can see it in Nico's eyes. You know you could have had it there. You got real clever. You really pushed the envelope. And it's, again, target, uh, target, you know, choosing which target you're going to go for in that moment. You don't know if he's about to turn around and check behind him. You don't know how far back his teammate is. It just doesn't line up. Shake it off and go again. That was a round of eco. G2 still did a lot of damage to Heroic. They did. Oh, shaking that off, though. That is hard to do. Not easy on any level. Tess pushes through. He's going to get traded. Not bad. But the nade, it might chase him down, following it through. And oh, even blowing up that AK-47 on top. That's a great two-for-one trade in favor of Heroic. They're starting to really feel it. What a monster know. round. Oh, they could have lost that so easily. What a power play from Heroic, though. Charging Banana like that through the smoke. G2 wanted to take the fight, too. So instead of mid, this time it's just Banana out and out brawl. And Heroic come out on top. But that being said, Heroic are on top. But if G2 stay grouped up like this, they can still have the man advantage going onto the B bomb site in a moment. This is the best chance that they've got because, yeah, look at this. Shush once again, just relentless. This is Heroic playing Heroic CS yeah. on the CT side, pushing constantly. You can never get complacent against Heroic, they will always push. Nexa was holding it, but the timing is just working out dead against him. 
Oh, if you watch that round from Nexus' point of view, he was holding Banana for a long time. He knew that something could have been coming, and he turns around, and three seconds later, he's dead. That is so unfortunate. Amanek has the bomb site, but no teammates, no bomb with him either. He's going to be found by Refresh, comes tumbling through the smoke, and still picks him up. Oh, dear. Five in a row now for Heroic. They're not that far away. This is out of control. And the money's going to be in shambles now for G2 as well. No bomb plant. So they're getting max max loss at this point. But it's a question of whether or not they're going to... Yeah, they're just going to go for the half by A couple of nades, some pistols. We saw how close it got last time, so let's not def let's definitely not count it out yet for G2. Still three, two rounds separating these two teams. And now we have it. Stavin with the flash over the top. Only the one for one. A bit too close for comfort, though. He saw all those bodies. Quick rotation coming out here from Heroic, trying to get over here to bolster the defense. And G2 decide. They make the right decision to back off and reset. They, fo they force a lot of utility yeah. out of Heroic. And now they've got a gun to work with as well. I mean, that's a pretty successful hit to begin with. Did lose some health on Nexa, but otherwise, AK now making his way. All the way to top middle, but Heroic, they were briefly over-rotated to the B-bomb side. They've made their way back. Kadian is ready and waiting. He does miss the shot. It's a bit uncomfortable. Shush, though, he has been incredibly good in the second half. They get the kill right there. Some spam on the other side for Jax. That AK, though, it's dangerous, and there's less than 50 seconds now. They need to find some kind of breakthrough here, and I think they were hoping it was a top mid, but they've just been slowed down. To a halt, 40 seconds left. Still have nades, wonderfully enough here for G2 to work with, but they're just hoping to get some kind of value out of this AK. If they can create an off angle here, this could be pretty good. Looking over broken wall. Does he make the jump? Yes, he does. Nico now, this is, this is insane. He can catch him out completely. They'll never expect this angle over the top. Does he see anybody in the open, though? This is it. Yep, looking for the reaction from Pit. He's just waiting for it all along. Refresh, he's going to stay hidden. Oh, man, if he had shown himself at that moment, I mean, it's a hard position to clear. Refresh is going to do it anyway. It's 12 on the board. It's six in a row for Heroic. Oh, they're stepping back into the semifinal. They were on the verge of losing everything. But that is a, that's a tight defense down in that pit. Or if he'd, just, if he'd gone for a bit of a swing, if he's like, all right, let me just take a peek. We don't really know what's happening. If he dies, maybe the bomb site goes with him. Yeah, to have that opportunity, and again, it just doesn't work out. I mean, Heroic, they're the ones who are showing that they're in control of this situation now. A round separates both of these teams. And now we'll get the full buy coming up here for G2 after that round of Eco. It's not done yet, but Heroic right now, <laughs> They've got the lockdown going on this map, and Shush, I cannot stress how important Shush is in these rounds. He is always in the right place at the right time, getting the high impact kills. He has saved Heroic a couple times now with these flanks. Yeah. <laughs> Shush refreshes down right now. The trio, the engine that's bringing Heroic back. I mean, this is exactly why we love Inferno as the deciding map. Yes. It's somehow just always meant to be. Nico gets a little bit of damage on him down at the bottom of Banana, but he's going to start to fall back. Kadian is playing it alone on A for the beginning, which is super risky if they go for a fast A play, but how would you to know when to do that? They are speeding it up a bit at top mid, but he's just holding this angle, and now the backup is here. It's just the standoff between these two teams now. Bottom banana smoked. We've seen that smoke make its way back into the meta. And so Heroic able to buy a little bit more time, but now G2 gathering up with a minute on the clock after showing some presence in mid. Look at how passive Heroic are playing on that in long side. <laughs> Nothing but there, but there's the room. Jax, can he make it across? Free fire from Stavin. It's not good enough. Stavin still gets the kill on him, though. He did just enough damage. Yep, and slowed him down. Amanek trying to push through on the other side is Tessas, and that's an important hold. At least now, they have that four runs free. But the bomb is going to be planted in this round. Nico sprays, they keep coming through. They're not going to be slowed down by that smoke. Just with the headshot as well. And Nico's on his own and just will come through once again. Heroic, it's now 13 on the board. That was a lightning fast retake. 
no hesitation, no chance to double think things, to hesitate at all, right? You just go through the smoke, you get it going, you're all there. That's the advantage of having all three on A like that, is that you can rotate together as a group and hit together as a group. You're not trickling in one after another. You're not leaving yourselves a chance to make a mistake in that key situation. But we're tied up, all tied up. Seven rounds in a row. They keep building. This is so rare to see a total dominant chain of rounds like this as well on the CT side on any of these maps, it feels like. I, I, I really cannot believe what I'm witnessing here. 27th round. There it is. Nico, there's the opening. Did he get more? Is he going to really try and double down on this? He's just hiding inside of the smoke and nope, he thinks better of it. Realizing, you know what? Not worth it. But this has prompted a rotation from Heroic over, yep, yeah, Cadian. Heading over towards B side, hoping to catch somebody there. And there is a chance this repeat is going to be glorious if it works. Everything his team needs right now. A huge chance to do some serious damage. Jax! What a headshot! Tessus trades it. Oh, that's insane. Tessus brings it back. Nexus there to trade, and they're trying to accelerate onto the bomb site. G2 have the man advantage. Yeah, and they're going to save. They are thinking about the long game here. Two on three. Maybe you win it. But if you run out of cash, they're not right about to. But if you do, that might not work out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, well, they have so much money in the bank. Yeah, but they look like they had already given up. They must have changed their minds. Maybe they're just looking for exits, but it looks more like they're actually trying to do this. The bomb was a bit delayed. There's a bit of a peak and refresh comes in. Heroic, what is happening? They had already left this round. You could tell on the minimap they were not ready to go for it. And now they're going to try and see if they can push their lock deep. Molotov forces them out. Shush with the headshot. This can't really be happening. Amanek is on his own and he's panicked. He's desperate. He's going to get the kill on one. The follow up and Shush! Comes in with the double. Unbelievable. All of these rounds are so close between these two teams. Again, Shush coming through for his team. For Heroic, they are so even across the board. Heroic, it's unreal. But whatever Shush touches right now, it turns to gold. He is so good. And this shot here from Refresh is amazing. Catching Hunter in the off angle like that. What a play from Refresh. You could tell. You could, I want to see the replay of the whole round. They'd given up on it. They were, they were out. 14, 13. Sometimes, that's the reason why you got to make plays sometimes, Andrews. You just got to go for it. You had the money to go for the full buy, and so you just try and make that play happen. Nico trying to sell a fake, trying to make a thing, make Heroic think that somebody is stuck in the cubby right now. They, <laughs> I mean, the big thing here is that G2 are getting bomb plants. Each time they're getting the bomb plant, they're getting the bonus money if they lose the round. So they're still able to get these rifles in, but they're running out of room now. Heroic are two rounds away from a spot in the Grand Finals. And G2, man, just, that is four, eight rounds in a row. I can't, really can't believe it. I can't believe that this is happening. Eight in a row, 28th round. Oh, this is what we've been, this is we've, been we've been surviving for a couple of years. We've been sort of waiting it out, but this is what we live for. Kadian goes down, Nico, another good opening. That's a step in the right direction, we've had this before. It's not enough to just get the opening anymore. We need to actually win the round. Get up to 14, tie this all up. Don't let Heroic get away with this. Refresh playing the arch position, and Stown is on his own over at the B bomb site, and he is going to be put to the test. Oh yes, all five gathering up. This is, what a fantastic read from Nexa. No time wasted at all, they're going to go straight in. Stown hits a headshot on Nico. Outrageous. The running straight shot. Here's the flashbang to set it up. He turns for it, but they're not flashed at all. Jack still goes down. Good defense. Hunter is there, and it's even better trying to hold them back, and he can't take every one of them. Instead, they're going to get the bomb plant. There's only five seconds left. Shush comes in. He's still fighting for it. He's never going to give up. Grenade doesn't do enough there. I think it bounced off the wall. Maybe he would have landed and done some more damage. But he's here in time. Now he's out on the look, flanking around through construction. They don't quite know where he is. Two versus one, but he should be there round here. G2 looking to finally break the streak. Eight in a row for Heroic, and I think it's going to be the end of it here. Shush turning his back, a little bit of an awkward spray, and he gets the headshot. 
Nexus walking up behind, but shush. No, this is a one in a million. He taps the bomb one time and Nexa comes running for him. He's given up on the round. It's gonna be the kill. Nexa will go up with the bomb, so they're gonna get that. 14 to 14. Big round out of G2, but Shush is a monster. He is, it's, and even with losing that round, there's no bank for G2, so this next buy coming up here is not gonna be terrific for him. It's them scraping the bottom of the barrel, whereas Heroic, plenty of money, they're gonna be fully equipped. So by no means does this get any easier for G2. You couldn't cut it any closer than this. 14-14, all tied up on Inferno. It had to be like this, Anders. We had to have the comeback from Heroic. It had to go the distance. Yeah, I don't know how this happens, but it seems like every time on Inferno, we're gonna get this 29th round. It's gonna go the full distance here. Opening semi-final of the major, the first one up. Oh man, double Mac 10, double Galil, and an AK on the side of G2, and that's after winning the round. Yes, that's the thing. They have so little to work with here, G2. By no means is this over, and heroic the power play. Here it comes. In the middle, they know it. Flash is there to set it up. Stone, he's not gonna get that one this time. Kadian hits the shot. They tried it earlier, and Kadian didn't get it, but here he is. Shush, he is unstoppable. Taking down Amanek and Hunter both. Nothing can shut him down. And Nico now, one versus four. Heroic about to be on map point. And this is talk about the power play coming in from Heroic to call for this aggressive strategy when it's all on the line. You know that G2's economy is going to be screwed, but still to make that call, that is bold. And now it's Nico, 1v4, trying to keep his team alive, but Heroic have all fully rotated over. They're just gonna play the power of bodies. They have the crossfire set up and they can afford to make the trades. As soon as Nico shows anything over here, that's it. Yeah, if he could pick up the bomb and run, I mean, that's his ticket back into the round. It's unlikely. And here's what's even worse, right? They actually might need that AK on him. So even though you'd love to see him try and go for the for the one versus four, they actually might just need the gun. What a heartbreaking turn of events. He's looked everywhere for a kill. He's like, someone, please, make a mistake. Come look, come peek, come fight me at Banana or anywhere else. He's not getting it. Stuck in the kitchen instead. Man, shush is... He is relentless, absolutely relentless. It's so fitting that it goes the distance between these two teams. In terms of rosters, they're indistinguishable when you look at the stats throughout the tournament. It had to go the 30 rounds on the third map. It had to go all the way because they're so evenly matched. Heroic though, this time, amazing. This second half of Inferno says it all. It's not that far away. So close. Well, yeah, we've been blessed by the Counter-Strike Guards for a 30th, 30th round here. 15-14. Heroic, um, a round away from the Grand Finals. And G2 now suddenly fighting for overtime. And that is, it is a momentum switch. It's a mental switch inside of the brains of every player. It doesn't feel the same knowing that you're not fighting to win straight away. You're just trying not to lose now. Well, Shush getting a bit of a highlight there, deservedly so. The number of times he's come through for his team here. Stop him getting flashed in a banana. They're looking for the fight now. On the other side of the smoke, it's all out spray, and Jax and Nico work together to drop him. Man advantage now, 4G2. Still a chance at forcing overtime. They tried to overpower them yet again. They wanted to see if they could get the clean knockout here. But on the other side, Jax with the Galil able to pick it up. Nico is close enough. They could have a pop flash around the corner. That double setup doesn't really work out, but if Nico gets one good flashbang here, that could win this round. He's ready, almost takes the kill, smoke is up, Tess is just walking forward, but Nico, he makes it look easy. He is on the hunt, the bloodlust is back, they want this round, they want the overtime, refreshes on his own inside of the site, and they'll find him cleanly, no issues. Kadian and Shush, two versus five, D2 have surely done it. And for the two of those players who have just struggled so mightily in Banana to get results for G2, for Jackson Nico to come with it here at the end, to come up with the goods. Nico has put on a star level performance so far, all series log, and well, there you go. It's like you summon him when you say his name, another headshot for him, Hunter ends it. We're going to more overtime, Anders, this is it, 15-15. Shush on 24 kills, Nico on 27. 
If not for him, this is not happening. If not for Nico, Heroic already in the grand finals. He truly is the, just the eternal MVP. He cannot, in every game that we've seen him in, he shows up. Well, he's the top of the opening kills for this tournament. He is the top rated player this tournament across eight maps. The man is a monster, the world-class talent. The best talent in the world is here, and he stands at the top of the pack, and once again, comes up with it. G2 now, can they show the killer instinct to get it done? Now that they've been given this chance, can they get it done here? I mean, the, the reset, there's almost no time, right? Just, oh, we didn't win it, now it's overtime. And we need, to, we need to put this out in the open as well for Heroic. It's 10,000 starting money as well. So there is additional pressure now on Heroic to win this round and win it decisively because they've yeah. spent a lot of their bank on this round right here. Yeah, double up. That'll dig deep into that 10k. There's a bit of a trade. Jax coming up with a huge headshot to take down Shush. What a nice start. Kadian looking for the highlights as well, trying to get the wall bang, which you can do. Nico nearly catching him. Oh, that is dangerous. Deep Nade will at least tag him up a bit. You need some backup to get out of here in the smoke. Might actually help him out. Nexa is paranoid about the flank from Banana, so he's already looking for it while the rest of them, they've called a freeze. And yeah, that almost worked as well. We have not seen that aggressive a take of apartments where Nico gets out almost on a balcony that early in the round. We haven't seen that yet. That was so close to working perfectly for G2. Still. An even man advantage favors the T side. The CT side has to cover more ground with fewer bodies at this point. You can see them split up two on B, two on A right now for Heroic. So G2 still have the advantage going into this take. All the relevant nades right now are on the B bomb side. So the fact that there are two people here, KD and Refresh, they have nothing to fight with, but a stunning headshot to start off with. Jax is down and out 20 seconds. Kadian, he's got the right idea. He got the crossfire there, but Refresh is down. Kadian still picks up the kill. They Oh, they catch him. Nico, he wanted to make the jump past the Kadian, and it looked like he was successful. But now, the retake is on. And again, just to remind you, double Molotov, double smoke. They have everything on this, uh, on this retake. And that could be huge. Let's see if they're going to be able to do it. There's the early nade, double nade, blows up Nico. That's why it was important. And now Nexer is on his own. One versus two inside of the bomb side. They can guess that. They know that he's here. Flashbang, and it is picture perfect. Nexer, he can't see anything. He's on his own. Wait, they don't check the bomb side. They smoke it up instead. He might have a shot here. They line up for him, and there's the spray on one. Nexer, has he got what it takes? Oh my god! He brings it through. There's the clutch once again, showing the IGL that he is more than capable of stepping up to the task for G2. They 29. Had they had the flashbang on him. If they take one more step one to the more. right, they see him and he's dead. Oh no. <laughs> I don't even think Nexa can believe what's happening now. And that just decked Heroic. Now Heroic have spent all of their money on this round. Maximum pressure on them to come up with it here because Jax gets tagged by Kadian. Nice aggressive peeking there from Kadian into mid. Could throw things off here for G2. G2 once again going back to the well in Banana, hoping to find somebody playing aggressively here. Nico's had success so far. But Heroic, they're going to make G2 work for it. Flash in the top mid. Set up though. Amanek going to catch Shosh, but there's Refresh trading it immediately. Jax just can't catch up. Break. He keeps going down. Yep, and this, the pressure is on. They catch Kadian. Oh, great tempo change. Nico with a double headshot to enter the bomb site. A little bit of an excessive smoke over there, but who cares? This is locked down. It's going to be 17 to 15. They're they Rorik not even thinking about it. Like you pointed out, they need the cash. They need the rifles. Oh, that is such a great call from G2. I wish that we could see G2 actually get out there aggressively and hunt right now because they have to know. They know that it's 10,000. They know that Heroic need every dime going into this last round. 2v4, odds of them retaking are so slim. So I kind of actually, I kind of wish that G2 would get out there and start aggressively hunting for these guns because if they can take these rifles off of Heroic, this could shape up into a perfect T-side overtime for G2. Yeah, that smoke has to tell you something. You see a smoke at top of it, suspicious. Yeah, and they might as well go for it here, right? They have the money to rebuy. If you just take one more rifle, it's a big deal. Nexa goes up with a bomb. They're trying to look for Stalin. He's going to get one of them and a oh, double kill. Wow. 
it doesn't really matter. From the side of G2, they don't care about that. They just wanted the rifle off his hands. 17 to 15, they didn't quite do it, but this is going to be a struggle now for Heroic in the final round of the first half of overtime. Considering how many rounds Heroic were able to chain together on the CT side, the fact that G2 pick up two rounds on the T side is unreal. They have set themselves up for success here. And now we're going to get the aggression in Banana. Nico turned away, trying to dodge the flashes. He may just go right through here. Yep, Tessa, they're trying to think about it. Stalin trying to put some shots through, trying to stop him short. And there's the nade over the top. <laughs> Too Dunk much on. pressure. Threw that into the skybox and right down into his face. And a lot of damage on the other side too. Jax is low on health. Stown is reoccupied. They're never going to know. Oh, Amanek, that is a quick flick to take down Stown. If that doesn't happen, they're all going to get wiped out. I can't believe he won that battle now. The grenades raining down amongst Tessas. He's going to burn alive. Amanek with the flames to bring him down. And now it's a three on three. They're going to go for a quick bomb plant here. Oh, what? Jax through the smoke. Kadian can't catch a break. What a play, though, from Refresh. Nearly gets both. 1v2 now for Shush. He's had some monster rounds for Heroic so far on this third map of the series. He has come up so many times for his team. But a 1v2 with only half the bomb time left is so difficult. post plan positions for G2. They're in a position to shut him down. As soon as he comes around the corner, they get the headshot. Amanek puts him away. A perfect half in the T side overtime for G2. They have three match points. Amanek, the hero of that round, quad kill. But the fact that he saved them at the car at the beginning of Top Banana, if he doesn't get that, they get wiped out. Absolutely brilliant. 18 to 15, they need one more round here, G2. And not only will they make the comeback back into overtime, they'll end up winning the semifinals and making it to the grand finals as your first team. Oh man, this, that first opening kill is everything. What an amazing comeback. The resilience here from G2 after that beating they took in the second half to force overtime and to get this result at the end of the first half of it as well. Unreal. And now we go into a changing sides. G2 now on the CT side. Heroic on the T side. They have, well, they have to play perfectly from here on out. Win all three T sides. T side rounds to force another round of overtime. Deep aid. That's actually... That hurts. Very deep on the stone. Yeah. They can't make any mistake right now. This is, again, the pressure is unimaginable right now if you're on the side of Heroic. You know, if you're the person to walk, you know, past the smoke, you get shot in the side of the face, that could be the end. Everything weighs so much more. Hamanek and Nico at the top of Banana. They're going to be forced back slightly with some grenades. They've isolated Nico out here. That's not a bad idea. Can they take him down, though? Havanek is not that far behind. He wants to get back into the action. Some more nades ringing out, and they actually... They don't really capitalize on that initial pressure. They maybe could have made it work. Now they lose that control again for a minute. Minute on the clock, yeah. 45 seconds left. And Nico still just... To, I mean, it's amazing that they keep challenging Top Banana like this. Heroic have had to commit so much to get this much room to work with, but now it's going to be on the other side of the map where they start to show a presence. Smoke's they going down, and the setup is here for G2. It might be a fake. 30 seconds, but it would be a bold call. Stown has started to make his way in here. 25 seconds, shot from Amanek. That's going to draw Nico back, and now they can't fake it. Now they have to go for it. They've left themselves 20 seconds to try and survive in the semifinals. It's madness right now. They might be in a lot of trouble. G2 have the bomb side on lockdown. Shush with a big double, but Hunter, he's back for more. And now he just has to stay alive. Still, Katie and left, and they get eradicated by Hunter.